nothing would be pretty in this world without the four. Mm -hmm. You guys make everything stylish. You make it so pretty. Now, that means that every unique thing about a person, they can come in and see a unique part of a person. You have the innate God-given gift to see a picture, let's say a painting, and go, you see that stroke of that painting and that part right there? I would not see that. I'd be like, oh, that's a really nice painting. All right, Dr. Axe here. I'm so excited about today's podcast. I've got, this is part two with part Dr. Two. Part two with Dr. Chris Motley. He is a, uh, a physician here in Nashville. He does a lot of things with kinesiology, Chinese medicine. He's one of the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable people I know when it comes to helping people heal holistically. And he runs his, I'll call it a functional medicine light clinic here in Nashville. And uh, man, I love your Instagram stuff. So good. Today we're going to talk about Enneagram and personality oh, types and how that can affect your health. Oh, thank you okay. so much for having me, brother. This is part two. We're going to have the best time. Yes, when we talk about Enneagram, I think one of the major components when we see people come in, they ask about their health, they ask me about their health. I do take into account their Enneagram number. And the reason being is because people process information in their body according to their personality. Like if you find somebody who's kind of all over the place, when you work on them, they'll have signals, acupuncture mm. meridians that are all over the place. So knowing a person's personality definitely can help and determine the way they heal. Yeah, it's so true. And one of the things I know that, uh, and, and this, you know, recently you and I were doing a, uh, you know, t both spoke at a conference together out in LA. Yeah. And that man had a great time hanging out. And you, you and I always talk, and we actually did an Instagram story and really talked about yeah. how these emotions affect our health. In fact, your entire talk at this seminar we did about, uh, about cancer was about um, healing emotions and the importance of it. So talk, talk, talk to me for a minute and to the audience about how do emotions actually affect our health? Do they affect our organs? Like How, how does that work? Yes. Um, when we're talking about the emotional upset or the amount of emotion that can enter into the body, I revert back to um, times in the office where some individuals may come in and say, well, it's just my emotions that create the problem. And people think a thought or an emotion is just something in the air and it doesn't affect them. It can't create a physical problem. And that is the furthest from the truth, truly. When we have emotions, if you have somebody tell you something, this is an example, something that upsets you, you hear a frequency, you hear a word, and that word actually creates a biochemical response in your brain. It creates neurotransmitters. And those neurotransmitters then transfer down to the hormonal glands, such as thyroid, adrenals, and ovaries. And they cre create hormones that do what? Initiate a fight or flight response. If we go into fight or flight response chronically from something somebody says or literally thinks emotionally, we feel somebody who's angry around us. We feel it. It turns into chemistry, turns into a physical problem because why? Our bodies undergo a fight or flight response. High blood pressure, sweaty hands, cortisol release, adrenal burnout. So emotions in Chinese medicine they refer to the fact that certain organs, certain meridians, meridians being energy pathways of electricity, certain organs are there to help us process information. And Josh, you said the best example at the conference when you talked about somebody who has to go to the restroom because they get what? Fearful. The kidneys process fear. If they get afraid, what does it do? This is how it works in neurology. In your kidneys, your kidneys, all your organs have what they call sympathetic nerves. And all those sympathetic nerves are what for excitatory fight or flight signals. They all attach to the outer shell of the medulla, which is your adrenal glands. So anytime you get stressed or have an emotion, it triggers certain organs to undergo a sympathetic response. So what do you do when you get fearful? You got to go pee. It contracts my bladder. Uh -huh. So how does emotions affect? Remember, your genetics, our genetics can determine, our personality types can determine which organs uh, process the most emotions for us. They get worn out the easiest. I'm going to tell you an example of me. I'm a stomach guy. What is stomach? Worry. I just, my mom passed worry onto me. When I get into a stressful situation, the first thing that shows up is my stomach. So that's how emotions are processed. Certain organs are supposed to process certain emotions. You know, well, you know what else is interesting too? I mean, for everybody, 
uh, different things trigger different types of emotions. So I, I, I had a, uh, Chelsea and I were somewhere recently and there was a young girl and she'd been bitten by a dog. And so uh-huh. she was so fearful, even, even hearing the word dog, she immediately got scared she, because she got bit not too long yes. ago. But I look at Chelsea, she hears the word dog. I mean, she lights up like she loves our dogs and so do <laughs> I, but I mean, it, it loves them so much and just loves me anytime we're on anywhere. Like she's looking for the dogs. You can pet them and love them. And, but again, think about that. Like for her, like her memory dog, it's joy. That's what it yes. brings to her. For someone else, it could be fear. I mean, so it's just crazy to think about too, how each of us are individuals and how we process emotions. And I did a interview pretty recently with, uh, with Dr. Alex Lloyd and, oh, yeah. and Alex wrote a new book called the memory code. And he really goes through, it's not just emotions, it's memories and how we attach things to memories and how different things we go through on our day, you know, it, we talk about the smell to like you smell grass or hey it's fall and different seasons affect affect our health in different ways so it's so interesting how oh. oceans affect uh you know uh, affect different organ systems and everything i agree everybody differently too so it's so amazing though isn't it brother that when you have a a memory like a dog because a person could have a bad experience with a dog so that memory is growing throughout your life. So if you had the bad experience with the dog, what does it do? It creates a memory and a thought. And eventually what occurs is if it starts to grow, you start to create the neuro, the biochemistry that starts to create an emotional tag to the memory. So Chelsea has complete good chemistry when it comes to a puppy or a dog. Whereas another person who got attacked, what did they do at that moment when they got attacked or got injured, they released fear chemicals. So now anytime that thought comes up, they release the chemistry as if they're back in the original time of the trauma. And I was going to say, I mean, I, I mean, th- this is the future of medicine and really looking at, I mean, I, I'll, I'll tell you of all the lectures and podcasts and things I do, I feel like people are the most interested when I start talking about the five elements and how it affects your emotions, Zodiac, yes. and then today is we're going to get into with, with Enneagram. And uh, let, let's do it. Let's dive in. I want to go through all eight Enneagram types and then Woo! afterwards... We can talk about emotions a little bit more, uh, but and if you're listening to this and you haven't taken any an enneagram test, you'll be able to pinpoint typically <laughs> which one you are. And if not, you can go online, look up enneagram quiz. You can take it, I think, for free. Yeah. Uh, at least there's a free version you can take and find out quick. So we're going to start off with number one enneagram type. So Chris, tell us about what enneagram type is number one, and then let's go through how they process emotions, what they're most susceptible to, and all that type of stuff. Oh, the reformers. Number one are the reformers. And these are the individuals you know and I know, Josh, that you you could have a little one in you too. I know that we can talk. Like I have a lot of one in me because um, they say they make great leaders. They're great organizers. they um, very honest and fair. They're the hard workers. Now, you can almost say that as a reformer, they're perfectionists. And they love order to the point where they love order in everybody else, but also in themselves. So they have a high standard and they love the small details. So if we are a one, if you're a one, you like the small details, you love order and you pay attention to the details. Now, to me, you're so aware of details and patterns if you're number one. And when you start to heal, they show how they operate inside. So if you have health issues and you're a one, I always address a person for being too picky or too hard on themselves because as much as they're detailed, they will start to say, hey, this person needs to do this or that. And then they get tired because they're doing that all day, but they start to reflect inward. And so the biggest thing is self-value and self-worth for some Mm. of these individuals because they will not pay attention to themselves. They're so busy paying attention to all the small things that they overlook themselves. Mm. So a one will go into the idea that um, they become the internal critic. Can I say that? They're very hard internal critic and it leads them to find the imperfections in themselves. And, and what happens when they start to see the imperfections in themselves, nobody can meet up to their standards. So they have a double whammy. They're really hard on themselves. They're really hard on everyone else. And this is why I tell everyone, you got to start to see the fun in life. 
because they will basically make their life about every small detail and they become workaholics. And I always say, if you are a one, I'm part one, you have to schedule in some good fun times. And, and I love that. And I know some ones that I'm thinking about uh, a person from, from church and she's just a rock star. And the thing, she is a perfectionist and mm -hmm. she holds other people to standards, as you're saying. Yep. And, um, but, but she gets so much done. Like if, it's like, if you want something done well, <laughs> yep. give, it, give it to a one. And so if you're a person listening to this and you're saying, okay, is, is that me? So, or maybe you know somebody, who do you know who's a perfectionist? who yep. holds people to standards and reminds them, hey, remember, this is the standard you should be operating at. That's definitely, uh, it's definitely a one. And, and Dr. Chris here, I know him personally, he is a 9-1, right? You're a 9-1? <laughs> I'm a 9-1. Yeah, nine you're one. a 9-1. Uh -huh. uh, and the, you know, like the ones, when you say you find people that get everything done, I love that about the one. And in my mind, when I get into that realm, I'll go, everything is okay if everything internally, externally in the world is perfect. So what I can have the tendency is when I get tired, if not, something's not in order, like the smallest little things, mm -hmm. I think the whole world collapses. I'm like, I didn't get that done. It should have been this way. But I want the ones to know is that when you see the beauty in the details, you basically make all the small, what I call in Japanese and Korean culture, the micro technology, you make the world actually very easy, accessible, mm. very pretty because there's so much detail out there and you're the ones who create it. So wow. have fun start to feel your feelings and remember that you don't have to be perfect on the inside or the outside. Like pay attention to the details, be who you are, but everything doesn't have to be in perfect order to heal, you know, so you can heal. All right. So based on that emotion that, that we know a one can have, talk about those emotions, talk about what organs or how that can affect somebody's health. And what are some, some practical solutions people ones can do or things they need to do to take care of themselves? Yes. Whenever we talk about the organ system with a one, um, I know we get into Chinese medicine. I get into my mind a lot. And the number one is like, I get completely in my mind when we get details and get very picky. I also look at the thyroid. So in the ones, I always pay attention to the thyroid hormone and the brain. And the brain in kinesiology has a lot to do with what we call with the shoulder muscles, the supraspinatus muscles around the shoulders. So what are practical ways, and I said it's having fun, is to be nitpicky. I will tell myself this. If I'm nitpicky, the number one thing is for a one is multitasking. We will get to the point where we want to multitask. A very practical, easy thing is to look at your daily schedule and see how many things you are doing. You have to stop paying attention to so many details. So I mm. tell my patients, if you have five things, you need to go down to three or just to two. And when we're talking about Chinese medicine and nutrition, I go into what we call, remember Josh, we talked about the adaptogens. We talked about like ashwagandha before. I'll get into taking ashwagandha. I will take um, uh, other ones like kava kava, even though I'm very careful how much kava kava is affecting the liver. I even go into Ayurvedic medicine, uh, medicine even more. And there's one called mangista. And mangista is like a cousin of turmeric, but it helps drain the uh, lymph system and it's very important because if you get the toxins to flow then you'll actually help the thyroid to heal a little bit better get that operating a, a bit more efficiently so those are three good ones i really like to do is is the ashwagandha the kava kava and there's some minerals and uh, the mangista so i say reduce your your requirements on yourself and give a few different herbs to help with the body's ability to what don't be so nitpicky in your life. Yeah, it's so good. You know, I, I see, you know, different elements if we're talking about, you know, the China, and we're going to cover this in a you and I part three, part three uh, of uh, Motley Axe here. But um, <laughs> when we do that, well, one of the things, you know, the, a lot of the ones I know, many of them are as you talked about them. Some of them, though, I've seen are, are metal element types. They're very structured, very yeah. perfectionist. And sometimes they start looking back at all the details, things they could have done better. Yeah. And it actually kind of leads to depression because they're living in the past of, you know, and rather than being in the moment. And so for some of yes. those people too, some of those metal element boosters, you know, the umami flavor, the ginger, those sort of things are, are key as well. Yes. Uh, when you just said it, just uh, when you say keep, keep depressed, there is a high amount of disappointment within the ones. The yeah. ones can be so disappointed in, in themselves. And I, I say a practical way, it may sound very cliche, but you do have to learn in a way to love on yourself. You got to yes. make the world fun. 
And it really is. That's the problem. You got to be spontaneous and schedule in fun. Find out the adaptogens. Go to Josh's website. He'll tell you once to help heal the adrenal and the thyroid. But when I say the brain, when you get the thyroid calmed down, the brain calms down. Yeah. And I mean, just finding those things to help nourish that system and being spontaneous will get you from being too regimented and like the metal element. Yes. Oh, too rigid. And, too rigid. And, and so as Dr. Chris is talking about here too, it's so important. I mean, you got to have fun. I mean, again, a lot of times perfectionists and the, if you are so rigid and structured that you need to have in Chinese medicine, they'll say you're metal, but you need to be flexible. You need to be like you still need to have some flexibility uh, and not be so rigid. So rigidness can be good to a degree or having fine lines and structure, but you don't want to be too structured. And I, what I love too is this one I'm referring to that I know a good friend of mine. She's married to a seven, which we'll oh talk my about. Word. Oh, so it's good great. Heavens. So it's what? like, so it's like <laughs> she is such a tasker. She is so structured. The seven is like, party time like all over it's just it's fantastic it's like the but, it's like opposites attract the yin yang come together yes with those two. oh i will but, say that whenever they do when, when a one gets uh, out of their shell i love it because um as they re have so many requirements or demands on themselves you find a seven that comes in they're like requirements and demands we don't need that. We just need to have fun. What are you talking about? Oh yeah. I think another my business partner Jordan Rubin, I think he's a one two. I'm oh, pretty okay. darn certain. Uh, he yeah. may have some three in him too. I'd be interested to see, but he's either a three two or a one two. He has all yeah. those three of those qualities really strongly. So oh, let's jump. Medals. Oh yeah, the metal. And Jordan's the medals. a metal too for sure. The medals. All right. So let's talk about number two. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah. And so and Again, I, I'm thinking about all the people I know that are these different numbers. I got one in my head now. But talk, talk to me about the number two on Enneagram. <laughs> the number two are the helpers, guys. And the helpers are the individuals who literally find joy in the act of service, the ones to actually help and actually to give. Uh, to the extent, this is what happens emotionally, their bodies have probably in some fashion that they're born as a two personality to be programmed to feel that they accomplish, that they are needed, and that they have joy and a sense of purpose if somebody needs their help. Like it, to me, this would be the great example. For instance, I'm a nine. I don't go home at night and say, man, I can't wait to help my neighbor clean his garage. I want to help him. <laughs> that does not give me joy. I will just be honest with you. But the helpers are the individuals, if you are too, that are so intuitive, but they're very compassionate and they're such natural givers. You know what I'm, Josh, you guys have got people that literally love to give just to give. Can, can, can I tell you what's so interesting too? So we, you and I have a mutual friend. Uh, we'll call him Dave because that's his name, but <laughs> he's a three, two, but really strong too. And so just I, think about how this plays out in relationships and your house. So for him, he was doing all these acts of service for her. So kind of moving to the love languages, like yep. he was driving her and she's a musician. He was like driving her to other states. He was cleaning out her garage. <laughs> she was doing, I mean, literally every day he would spend hours like serving her in different ways. Like, hey, honey, I'm going to do this for you, this for you. Yeah. And then finally she broke down and felt, and, and, and she told him, she's like, like, I feel like our relationship like isn't where it should be and whatever. And, and he's like in shock because I mean, yeah. what guy like serves his like his significant other or his girlfriend all day long? Well, comes to find out like her love language isn't acts of serving. It's like her last one. Yeah. She's all about quality time and words of affirmation and everything else. And so again, but twos, they want to just serve. They want to support. They want to love, oh, yeah. which for some people is great, but that's another... I mean, I know we could talk about a thousand different types. Oh, it's so interesting it. to me as we talk about these different types. Oh, it's great because like, whenever you see somebody that would give, give, and give, and then you have another personality, like the girlfriend, who is some reason in her personality is not adept to, or not adept, like doesn't feel compelled to receive gifts in certain ways. Like that form of reception, that then goes back into literally their programming. How were they raised? How were their personalities developed? Like that's not how I was raised to receive in that manner. But the two would be the more selfless I can become, the more compassionate I can show my gift, the better I feel. Literally the endorphin release, the actual healing within a two is accentuated by the amount they give. And you will see like the Mother Teresa's of the world. Those are the helpers. And do you ever find, Josh, like I will go to, let's say we go to a dinner 
there are some individuals who literally love serving people the food at the table. Everybody else will be seated at the table and the two will be the person giving out all the food yeah. and they love it and they won't even eat. They'll eat as they go along and they're like, Oh, that'd be Dave. He's like, Oh, here, look, get this, do this. Let's get together and grow. And so you need the twos because nothing would get done in this world without the twos. Yeah. Nothing would get done. And the world would be very mean if we didn't have the twos and make them mean and get, get things done. I was doing dinner at uh, Fifth and Taylor here in Nashville recently yeah. with a group of people and everybody was a different element or Enneagram at the table. And yeah. the two at the table was like, first off, I'm worried about planning. Like, so I, the, enti I, the entire time I'm thinking about, okay, how do we plan this out perfectly? Like, when should we order this and then this and then this? And, and so the two at the table, you know, the waitress comes up and he's in the first thing he's saying is, you know, hey, Julia, hey, how's your day? Hey, how are yeah. you doing? What I, I mean, really, like he was looking at how to serve, <laughs> like, you serve, know, her. Yeah, serve exactly. her. Um, anyways, it's and we're all and you're all hungry. You're like, you yeah. really want to get our food. Like, 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 <laughs> that's right. <laughs> when so, they get when they have uh, sensitivities as too, it's like um, there is that thing in their in their hearts and their minds. Like if they ever start having people ask them about them, like if you have your friend, you go, "Oh, well, how are you doing?" They almost can feel selfish. Because they're so used yes. to giving, they go, I'm not used to anybody, quote, caring for me because they've lived a life programmed in the sense with their personality to always give, give, give. And so they do it and then they get so used to giving that they get burnt out. Mm -hmm. And then the giving becomes so fatiguing to them. They're like, I don't receive. I'm like, nobody wants to give back to me. And so why? Because they spent their whole time giving and not receiving. There has to be the reciprocal exchange. And so if they don't receive, what do they do? They get burned out. They get, they get very cynical and not to the, this, this one, but to the two, it just shows you that you're burning yourself out as a two, you're tired. And so I always advise my twos. If somebody wants to do something nice for you, let them do it. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest things. Yeah, man, that's so good. So as twos, as we're talking about two, they're the nourishers, they're the mothers. It's yeah, probably earth element in Chinese medicine to a degree. And just, oh, yes, just nurturing. And but if you over give, here's the thing, you were created to give and you should give. But as Dr. Chris is talking about, you have to receive, you yeah. have to be okay. And you've got to take care of yourself or you run out. You know, yes. if, if, if you're pouring yourself out all the time and not filling your bucket back up, you have nothing yes. left. And the biggest thing that probably affects, I would guess, Dr. Chris partly is going to be the pancreas, the spleen, a big part of the GI. And then there's probably, I know there's some other areas too that you'd probably say in, in, in uh, yes, especially like when, when a patient with a two personality would come into with the earth element, the earth element, I always say they're the stomach givers. They're the, uh, the spleen people. It's like, you know, we're no. talking about the, the stomach individuals, the earth element goes into the room. The person who's at the dinner sees the table and goes, I know exactly what each one of you need. The mother archetype. They're going to go, I feel it. They're the stomach feelers. And what do they do after they feel? They have the great ability to feel in their stomach. And what does stomach bring about? Worry and mm -hmm. pensiveness. So not only are they like being the mother, they go, I hope everybody got their food. I hope everybody's okay. Because there's this ingoing belief of their head that goes, the love of others, the love of others depends on how much I give. So how much mm. do you give? Like, I'm going to keep giving and they're going to feel love because I give. And then that starts to do what? They start to neglect themselves. They're like, well, how much I give makes them feel love. So I better give every single thing I got. And that earth element is like, no, you need to be nourished. You got to have what? You have the other elements around you. You've got to have a bit of wood element in your life. You've got to have some metal. So I will tell some patients, when you are a giver, you need to have fun. We said that before for the mm -hmm. one. I said, but you need at least one day out of your out of the month to yourself. Like you got to stop yeah. thinking about other people for a day. Train your neurology. Get out of the two. Get out of the earth element, and then receive. Have fun. Let people take you out. And remember, get pampered. Like That's go get. Good. I mean, get a manicure. If, even if you're a man, get a manicure or something. Do something for yourself, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, manicure, it could be whatever fills you, you know, what, yeah. what, whatever fills you up. And really, a lot of it's community too. Spending time with people you love really yes. will help it too, where, where they're encouraging you, they're loving on you, getting around those types of people. What, what, what are some of the best recommendations you have? Food, supplements, things that twos can do to nur nourish themselves. 
Yes, like especially with the spleen involvement. I say that when you talk about nourishment, the spleen organ is a basic lymph organ. So the spleens do what? They rebuild red blood cells, guys. It puts oxygen back into the blood, and also you have it helps clean out the blood. So this is what happens. When we are givers, if you're a two, if you ever got a cold or a virus or any type of bacterial infection, remember, your body will kill those things off. And what does your spleen do? Your spleen filters your blood all day of all the particles of those old critters. So you have two things you need to do whenever you are accentuating the spleen. Build oxygen, which means you may want to eat foods rich in iron. Mm. different types of cruciferous type, type vegetables, even lean red meats that have a lot of iron. You want to supply some of that extra uh, fortification to help your spleen put iron in the blood, circulate, so you can carry what? More oxygen. And then lymph. If it's cleaning out the infections, I always go back. I love neem powder. Neem powder yeah, is yeah, really good awesome. because it'll kill off any infection. I do like noni powder. It's a big, it's called Mirinda or noni, and that cleans out as well. And so I take those two, and Josh has a best product, the turmeric. The turmeric will go in and literally take the inflammation out of the body, which does what? Reduce the inflammation within the spleen. The spleen calms down, the energy goes, right, and it goes up, and this is how it affects in Chinese medicine. When spleen chi rises, guys, you eat your food, it comes down the throat to the stomach. The, sp- the stomach chi pulls it down to the stomach. The spleen fortifies it, and disperses it throughout the body. So yeah. you take your turmeric, and then that heat goes through your body, and you feel warm. Why do people want their morning coffee so bad? Because it brings internal warmth. It stimulates the spleen to create warmth. You feel a warm feeling inside. So the twos, remember, iron-rich foods. You want to get some good red meats if you get lean red meats, and any cruciferous type plants with that kind of uh, iron element to it. You know, you know what's so interesting, uh, Dr. Chris, and this is something else I love too. So the two that uh, I was working with, she was having major health issues and uh, it was because she was anemic. Oh yeah. Now, that's what yeah. it was. And so we did your exact recommendation. I mean, it was red meat. It was some great uh, spinach. It was beets. It was all these blood builders and then some astragalus and some Don Kwai, you know, as oh, well. Oh, Don like, Kwai. That's so good. It, yes. I didn't even it, think it, about that. But uh, I would say, and if you're having like loose stools, um, astragalus, I think is a must there. And then if you're talking about blood, like, like Dr. Chris is the neem is fantastic. Uh, oh, Don man. Kwai is fantastic. All these things are great. Now let's talk about three. Now three is one of my favorites because my wife, Chelsea is a three. <laughs> and uh, I was just thinking about that actually. Oh yeah. So <laughs> she's she, a three. She's a three. <laughs> Why is a three the best? The three is the best is because guys, that's the achiever. Oh yeah. my goodness. Uh-huh. The threes are the individuals that literally, if you take any type of event, they will take it in a positive way to the extreme. They are the ones that want to be the best at what they do. And so that makes them motivating. It makes them such good leaders. And they're efficient and practical. They're practical to uh, ad nauseum in a good way. But they're the natural performers and they're driven. So they work hard and they naturally energize everyone else. They inspire other people to actually be their best. Um, if you ask a three to come in second or third, Ain't going to happen. No. The threes are the people that are like the Michael Jordans in our lives. So yeah. um, they, this is the one thing I see it in Chelsea too. She has that Gemini effect on her. She has the ability to draw people together. Mm. And the threes, they speak to everyone and everybody listens because the achiever, it's in, the, it's in their voice. So they almost can have either wood or water element effect in their lives and when they inspire the people the um, the threes or the achievers they can be the dreamers in the sense in a positive they can think of good ideas and it starts rolling with them and um i would say this when they're such achievers josh this is what i'll say if you achieve you believe you have to perform something to get reward so an individual who's a three who is high achieving Mm -hmm. they come into effect where they say well i'm only rewarded and noticed for something i do Mm. something I'm really good at. And I go, well, you're not really judging about what you do. You do produce a lot, but that doesn't mean that nobody, that people don't love you if you don't produce something. Mm -hmm. So then they are always judging themselves. Like literally, I don't know how Chelsea is about it, but if she doesn't produce or somebody doesn't produce a certain amount, they'll start being really hard on themselves. Like Mm -hmm. I didn't do enough. Uh, What's, what's my goal? What am I driving to get to? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, threes, as you're saying too, like they're competitive, like Chelsea, it doesn't matter what game we're playing, what we're doing, or if we're not playing a game, I know she's thinking, (laughs) she's thinking, 
am I winning? Am I winning right now? Like, and she's in the supermarket. We're driving. Hey, we're both driving. Does she get there first? Like, if you're one of those people and like everything in your mind somehow is a competition, if you're at the gym on a treadmill next to somebody and internally you're saying to yourself, I have to go faster than this person next to me, there's a really good chance you're a number three. You're a three. And then it's it, to the point where do you ever see that if they are on the treadmill or they see somebody else with good intentions, they have somebody that's their friend or their colleague that's doing really well beside them. You're like, no, this is a competition. And this is a, a healthy competition. And then what does that do? It motivates people. Like yeah, that's the healthy yep. portion of the three. I'm going to motivate you to be the best you can be. And then they start. But when they turn inwards yeah. and they go, I got to be better than anybody else. They're like, that, that's when it can become unhealthy, when they get their adrenals blown out, when yes. their thyroids get too, too fatigued. And then they start to go, they experience low self-esteem and then that drives them. So mm. what, Josh, I think like if you were a water element or a wood element, like the achievers are people who are like yourself, this, like the CEOs, the people who lead and bring people together. But that's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. The threes have so much responsibility. And I feel for you too, like as much as you lead, it's like be mindful of how much energy you can serve. And I, you're a great example of how much you try to self-care. And I really, that's really good, Bo. Yeah, I would say, you know, Chelsea's a, a water element. I'm a wood, if we're talking Chinese medicine here too. And that, that's what most of them are. You know, I think threes too. A lot of times they're pastors. A lot of times they are leader. I'm just thinking because my yeah. pastor too, he's a three. And um, But yeah, th threes are the achievers. They're the competitive ones. So let's talk about what happens when you have that three mm -hmm. and they're judging themselves based on these high standards maybe they didn't get their to-do list done enough and they're, you know, and, and they're, they're losing self-esteem, that self-esteem, they start to lose that. Yeah. That, that's more, that's more of an adrenal issue, right? Than anything else. It is. I think that adrenal issues, especially when they had the low self-esteem and you mentioned it at the, the conference doc, you said that the kidneys and the adrenals are so interrelated mm. that like a lot of water elements are people who inspire, who are leaders and the kidneys get tired. The adrenals get tired. And so what does that do? It can create a sense of fear within these individuals because in Chinese medicine, if the kidneys get drained, it can produce dread, bad memories or fears. So the fear of what? Not being good enough, like not being able to perform enough. And so they can experience low self-esteem. So I say, let's build the adrenals. Let's build the kidneys. And they say, what do you want to do? We've talked about, I love reishi. Reishi is yes. probably one of my favorites to build the adrenals. And when I go into reishi mushroom, I'll even mix in other mushrooms. I mean, sometimes I've even gone into do like cordyceps and do different mixtures. I don't yeah. know why I love mushrooms so much when it comes to this, but I also do suma root. Suma root's one of my favorites too. So I'll yeah. give a combination of suma root. And I also say with foods, if you're going to build up the kidneys, I think the kidneys are such, like we say, a water element, um, uh, organ that you're going to have to do what give stuff to it that helps build filtration. So even people say use pomegranates, Josh, I remember when you said yeah. at your off at, at your talk that you eat foods that resemble the size and shape of the organs, like That's right. to build the organ. It was so fantastic when you yeah. said it, doc. Oh, Thanks. Dr. Axe killed it at this conference. It was great. It was great. We are talking about threes. We're talking about what happens when they get fearful. What happens when they lose that self-esteem? Now, here's the thing. That's if they're out of balance. If, if a three's in balance, they're courageous. Yes. They are deep and full of wisdom. They're a well, yes. you know, that yes. you can draw from. And so, you know, threes are absolutely amazing, but it's all about, it's about being in balance. It's taking care of yourself so you can love and serve others. And so think about that as Dr. Chris is talking about a lot of threes, it's adrenals. You got to take care of those, as he talked about. Yes. It's the adaptogens like the mushrooms, like reishi is a fantastic recommendation along with the suma root. I'm going to throw one other in there. Uh, ancient Chinese herb, Ramania, you know, Ramania. One, 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 oh, of the, one of the chiefs there for adrenals. But that's what you need to do as a three. Let's jump into number four. Now, talk about a vast difference in terms of um, some of these other types is the number four. The number four is what we call like the individualist. I call these individuals the artsy people of our world, the artistic. Right. And you and I know one of our friends, we, have, we know a lot of individuals like by my friend Jeremy, he is complete four. You know him too. And he's yep. like, if he, the more unique they are, the more that they can understand the world in the sense of being unique because the better they feel. So this is how an individual comes in and they're four to me. Like, what do I see? 
nothing would be pretty in this world without the four. Mm -hmm. You guys make everything stylish. You make it so pretty. Now, that means that every unique thing about a person, they can come in and see a unique part of a person. You have the innate God-given gift to see a picture, let's say a painting, and go, you see that stroke of that painting and that part right there? I would not see that. I'd be like, oh, that's a really nice painting. It's a, and they go, no, see the color and the reflection. So they see the beauty in other people, and they spend most of their time, the fours do, recognizing the beauty of other people. So who are they? They are the encouragers in the sense like they're like the counselors. They can look into somebody and go, this is who you are, and this is how pretty mm -hmm. your insides really are. And so they have the innate gift to be empathic. It's almost that they can read things without anybody else can be in the room and not see what they see. So it's the individuals who get in front of people or in a stage or in a group of people and know what they're thinking and can revert back to them and tell them what they need to hear because they have that ability to see the uniqueness in the person, feel it, and then put it back into them put it back into the crowd. So, the, the, but this is what I say. They see true beauty. They love the mystery of being the, um, the artist seeing uh, the intricacies of all the world. Now, as they see the intricacies in everyone else, if they get tired, then they believe that nobody can actually see the intricacies within themselves. Mm. Those are the artists that remember they say that the people that make the best band members, the best yep. painters, what do they do? They go isolate themselves in a room by themselves. Nobody understands me. Nobody gets me. Mm -hmm. And so you'll start to see individuals who are fours who are very unique, start to shell up, and wall off. And so I tell individuals that they have to start being more present and they have to be, instead of being walled off and being so aware of everyone else, you got to realize that other people do notice you. So when we talk about Chinese medicine, I always feel like in certain organ imbalances with a four, being unique, being the artist, withdrawing within themselves, man, there's a few elements that could be yeah, in this. There in, could be several. In this, there's several. What do you think? I mean, I would say, you know, I mean, this might surprise you. I would say some of them that are more charismatic are probably fires. I agree completely. We're yes. really high up there. And then I would say you're probably going to have some that are probably going to have some woods too on occasion. Uh, yeah. it, it's going to be a mix. Um, it's I, not as I definite as some, as some, but yeah. Yeah, I think with the fires, um, the fire elements is whenever you have a fire element mixed in with a four, the element uh, would then indicate to me that I have to check out a few organs, like their small intestine. I had yes. to check the heart. I had to check the pericardium, the muscles around the heart and in the chest and the thyroid and the adrenals. So we do test points in, in, in acupuncture. Josh and I talk about um, different points that you check on a person that would indicate to us which organ would be in balance. So a four comes in and usually they can have a lot of heart Mm -hmm. indicators because they feel with their heart. They see beauty. They're the mm -hmm. artists. They're like, this is what I feel inside. And so when that occurs, I always recommend to them certain types of supplementation or certain types of herbs that build their heart. Like we have one here at the office. It's, they call it HemoGuard, but basically it has different types of papaya, has yeah. ginger root, a lot of heat building ginger root. And it also has different types of um, black radish to help clean out the arteries and such within and colonzonia root. Colonzonia root is a good one to help clean out the circuit circulatory system. So I see those kinds of uh, herbs and um, uh, spices that actually heal up. Now, I still like turmeric. Turmeric will help. The totally. Fire element. Yeah. Uh, yeah go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, I love those recommendations for, for fours. And again, f f fours are so, they are so empathetic. I mean, it's amazing. They, they just, they, they feel the pain. I, I was with a relative of mine that was a four and and I'm not saying that I'm not sensitive and my heart doesn't feel in other countries when something bad happens. Mm -hmm. She had something and she started crying right there. I mean, she really felt the pain of those people that she'd never met before. Yes. And being in Nashville, I, you know, when I ran my clinic and even now today when I run, in, you know, I'm thinking friends and other people, but there's a lot of fours in Nashville because yeah. the art community of musicians and artists is so, so prevalent here. We see and, and know a lot of fours. And again, it's all about being balanced. Fours, when they're balanced, they, they are so creative. They create the most beautiful things. They bring out the best in you. But as you're saying, like a fire element that's a four, if they're out of balance, they're the sort of people that become drug addicts because they you know what I'm saying? And then they'll isolate yes. themselves and no one understands me. So they'll turn somewhere else for a proof. You know, so again, but this is all about being balanced. If you take care of yourself, you're going to thrive. And it's taking care of yourself with these, you know, with 
foods, supplements, but also, you know, your, your healthy emotions, spirituality. I mean, these things are all important. Exactly. I think that when you say spirituality and then accentuating with certain types of foods and, and getting to build up the heat in the heart and people say, why would you build up the heat? It's like, because you need to start to feel warm inside. Yeah. You have to feel the warmth of other people. As Dr. Axe just said, it's like when you feel people around you, you have to start to train with your experiences. The first thought is to be isolated, but when we talk about experience, you need to put yourself around individuals who notice you. It's not about you being ego. It's just that you can't like they're resorting to drugs or anything that would actually help raise their dopamine levels. It's like, why? It's because yeah. they feel so shut off that nobody pays attention to them. And what do they say in pack mentality in nature? They say that when you're in community, you naturally raise endorphin levels. So if you're isolated, your endorphin levels literally just shoot down. So we have to change the mentality. I, I, any and for, and I know, you know, like we have tons in this town. They're like, Oh, I stayed in my room all day. And I'm like, you stayed in the room yeah. all day. You have to get around people and know that people understand you and are aware of you. Now you may be more, you know, they may think nobody knows my music. Nobody knows my painting. They don't understand. It's like, then you need to tell them what you think. That's right. And then people will understand. Yeah. That's right. That's good. I'll say about number five. Let me go back. Let me just say this last thing about number fours as well. Fours can also be dramatic sometimes. And so yeah. I think it's important to know it's okay. You need to let your heart out, but at the same time, you need to find healthy ways uh, to, um, I'm trying to think how to say this because being dramatic can be a turnoff at one point. It's one thing to be dramatic. It's another thing to be overly dramatic. And so I think you need to know yourself and Hey, if you're dramatic, be around the sort of people that accept that and love that about you. And, uh, and at the same yes. time, you also yeah. want to be sensitive of other people's feelings there too. All right. Yes. Number fives yes. and fives are really interesting. I only know a few. I don't know a lot of fives. I know a few. I, I know two. But yeah. I know, I know two. One, I'm thinking of one right now. You know, fives are kind of like, would you come like Sherlock Holmes? I mean, what, how, how would you describe a five? They are the investigator. They're the ones that search for progress and they look for advancement. So without them, nothing would be progressed or have advancement because they investigate to try to find out like a, a person who works in a laboratory. I got to find out the reasons why and I'm going to put together a formula and understanding or researching something to the point where I know how something works. That way I can improve on it. Mm. So they love to uncover the truth. That's a five. They love to know what goes on inside you and they want to bring to light what's going on with everybody that's around them. So these are the individuals we know that go the two I know. If you tell them something, they will go on the internet, they'll go investigate, they'll get all the books they can and read everything about a certain subject matter. Yep. Isn't that crazy? The what, the whys, the what's, the when, the where's, and it almost makes them they're such good problem solvers that they create innovation. So when you're a five, you're an investigator, but remember, you bring innovation and it always comes so easily to these individuals and everybody else wants to come to them to help them solve their issues because they've investigated so much. They know what to do. So these are the people yeah. that when you see Josh, you go, you call up somebody who's a five and go, Hey, I was going to buy this such and such. What do you think about it? They already know all of about all about oh, it. Yeah. So and great. Yeah, I know. Actually, now that I'm thinking of actually a couple that I know, I think one is a metal too in Chinese medicine. Yeah. And the other is actually a wood. But yeah, it's interesting. So they're the researchers. Now, let's talk about where things can go wrong with them and some, and some things they can do to take care of themselves. Yes. Um, since they have like at the center of them, discovery is like one of the biggest things uh, for the five, the investigator. They discover the part that gets me a concern for a patient that comes in with the five attitude is that in their environment, they will deplete themselves and from doing the investigation. So they will actually go in and investigate, become withdrawn, and they actually become loners. And this emotionally makes them separated in their feelings. What they do is they literally will not let emotions touch them. Have you ever seen, there's a show called um, Big Bang Theory. It's yeah. on CBS. Sheldon. Sheldon. He's a five. He investigates and he doesn't uh -huh. even know what his emotions do to another person because he's so withdrawn into himself. So what they do is they, they're withdrawn. They get into their own knowledge. They're so smart. They go, oh, I know this. And so they depend on themselves for what? For almost for self uh, companionship. And this is why. The, have you ever heard the joke? There's a joke. 
that goes, the best conversations I have with myself. They literally are like, why would I go to somebody else? Because I already have all this knowledge within me. So when they get around other people, the fives I know, they literally go, I can't be in a big crowd. I don't like being around crowds. Like they are depending on themselves. So they get tired. They depend on themselves for their own companionship. So yeah. I tell the loners, and I call that respectfully, the loners, I don't want them to become lonely. And I don't want them to become withdrawn and, and cave in. So when I tell at five, what do you need to do emotionally? I'm like, you have to engage with the world. Like you have to get out in the world and resist the urge to formulate all the end results. These individuals will literally like go, why would I have a relationship with these friends? Because all it's going to do is end up like that because it's so smart. Yeah. And, and I think too, there, there's a way to the healthy way to be a five and the unhealthy way. The, the healthy way to be a five is to also, it's to walk in humility and not arrogance. Oh, when you yes. believe that you can learn from everybody, a p person on, you know, somebody who's homeless, you, you might, you can learn something from them versus, Hey, you got a business CEO. You can learn from them too. You can learn from everybody versus thinking I already know it all. Or I yes. can find this or I have my spots. I like, so anyways, all that being said, I think that's an important thing to think about with the five. So that five, somebody come, becomes withdrawn. What are some effects of some of the uh, negative emotions that a five can have and how can they take care of themselves? Uh, complete where I, we do mix in when I say there is um, people who are fives when they investigate, they do still have some of that earth element we talked about before loneliness and lung. So what will happen is a lot of the mm. loneliness comes from the earth element. A lot of the grief and sadness of being alone goes through the lung I mean, through the lungs. So you can have a mixture of metal and earth in these individuals. Yeah. And I try to give them in, in supplements that help do what build the lungs build the lungs as what bring oxygenation to the lungs. And so I sometimes give any people in different types of glandulars for lung tissue, but I have found with my five, uh, number five patients, anything that would clear out old bronchitis. Now mm. that may seem unusual, but the individuals who stuff things in their lungs, who don't grieve properly, who get sad and get lonely when they are young, you will notice that those individuals had a lot of bronchitis or lung infections. So we talked about neem before or morinda, but there's another Chinese herb I like, brother. It's called, it's Chinese isotis called woad, W-O-A-D. Okay, yeah. And man, that will clean out some of the lung tissue. And you'll notice that some of these individuals will start to grieve. They'll start to cry, get mm -hmm. their loneliness out. And then they'll actually want to become more engaging and get back out. So yeah. It's, it's amazing what the elements and the Enneagram kind of co coincide. It's so great. So again, if you're a five, you got to move your lungs, get out there, do, do cardio, oh, work, yes. work out a little bit, walk out in nature, some, some, you know, good air, and then do some things, take some supplements, some herbs, some things to clear. There's a great TCM, another formula. I'm tr remember, trying to remember the name of the brand, something Ridge, but they have a great lung formula for clearing it oh. too which I think yeah. is great. Let's talk about a six. So I'm thinking about Chelsea's best friend is a six. Oh, and you got to start this off. What is it? Yeah. 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 So, and here's, here's how she thinks that everything like they, they moved in a new house not too long ago. And when we were walking through it, she was talking about things like, Hey, if something goes wrong, you know, here's an area where we can get out of the house. She had planned it all out. Like in any situation, she's sitting there looking at it. Like, how could this go wrong? And what's my plan for once this all goes, you know, when everything falls apart? It, oh, man. The, um, the loyalist, the six who comes along and says, well, how's it going to fall? Like, because when they say fall and apart. she is loyal for sure. She's too. loyal. Like everything that in their mindset, right, is that to look out for like the underdog or find um, the things that's hurting the most. So it trains their neurology to go, something's got to go wrong because I got to go rescue it. Like they are the yes. natural rescuers. They'll uh, rescue animals, they rescue people. Well, her whole thing, her and Chelsea, they talk about, they literally talk about this, buying an island one day. That's literally their goal in life is to raise enough money to buy an island where all of the dogs that are going to be put down, they can bring to the <laughs> yes. island and have a dog haven. And yes. so and she's a rescuer. You know, and, and when they have the rescue mentality and they'll want to take care of the elderly, they want to take care of pets and that we need that because, you know, none of the underdogs would ever flourish. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have rescue missions. You wouldn't have yeah. places for the homeless without the, um, the six and they step in. So if they see anybody getting hurt or harmed, like their goal is I'm going to make this right. I'm going to defend this person. I'm going to take care of them. And you're at an island to take care of the puppies. And the thing is, like Chelsea's heart in this, they love, they love big, don't they? 
Oh, they yeah. just that's all they want to do is be yep. just love individuals and show people like how they can love. And this is what I love. I love about the six is that they are so good at perceiving the needs of others and stepping in. But sixes, when you say look out for both the uh, the small things and that could go wrong it shows some form of insecurity within themselves. Mm. Sixes will usually have some form of insecurity or self-doubt or anxiety. So those individuals usually go, I don't, I'm not good enough. I don't know if I'm going to ever make a mark in this world or do something that's positive, but they'll make everybody else feel like they can conquer the world. So yeah. the thing they give out like, Oh, care, love, you're worth it. You're worthy. I'm going to help you out. And then they go, I'm giving it out all day, all that energy, but it shows that they go, then they stop doing it for themselves. Mm. And I think that with the six, they, um, with those individuals, when they see a, the a situation that's the worst in the situation, like the glass half empty, and they start to judge themselves, I always advise, uh, advise them that they are encouragers and they need to be encouraged. That's my biggest thing. They, they need to be encouraged. They need to be around people that encourage them and strengthen them, that amplify them. Like, your fr- like Chelsea's best friend needs Chelsea because Chelsea's I, one of those individuals who helps encourage. Yeah, yeah. So, so action step for six is here. Write down those two people that are sucking the life out of you that discourage you and really get them out of your life. Write down those three to five people that they're encouragers. Yes. That you love being around and spend more time with them and be proactive about making sure you're spending time with those people on a regular basis. Well, what, what are some of the health effects of sixes if they're in that negative state and maybe some food supplements and things they can do to help. Yes. Usually with doubts and confusions, I, I am going back to, um, to spleen quite yeah, a bit because the sure. spleen will show up with people with doubt. The spleen gets overworked. So these individuals will start to, uh, the spleen will get overworked and what the tendency for those individuals will start to eat more sugar because sugar will stimulate is stimulating to the adrenals and the adrenals are getting burned out because the adrenals are reacting to the spleen. The spleen is tired trying to create more red blood cells, more white blood cells, create more oxygen to keep the system going. So as we said before, I really give spleen building foods and I would go back to going, what can we do to help bring their anemia or bring their iron back up? What can we do to create oxygen? So we even say like high amounts of minerals. I do a yeah. lot of minerals with this, this one doc. And I, whenever I see their iron, I mean their mental levels go up and their anemia starts to level off they do get a better perspective. For instance, like you said, find the people in your life that don't suck the life out of you. You will see some of these individuals in practice where they go, I used to hang out with this group of friends and all they were were so negative. But a few weeks before they wouldn't say that till you start giving the foods to help build their spleen. Well, I'll say what's interesting and also dangerous about the sixes. The sixes want to rescue broken people. Yeah. Which is good. But if you if they only spend time with broken people oh that God. might be reacting with hate and negativity because they're bro- because they're hurt people that are hurt say hurtful things oftentimes it do. can end up sucking the life out of them and I'll say this too like think about the earth element it's all about like the fall harvest you know so eating oh, like you know this girl she does so well with pumpkin and yam cinnamon does really well with cinnamon and those things that are you know. Uh, as you're oh, talking man. about spleen building there as well. Um, yeah, that's right. Oh man. Yeah, I thought about, I forgot about like you say earth. I forgot about like the fall time. Yeah. The pumpkins and the squash and the cinnamon and such, because you're right. If you're going to hang around people that are negative, remember you always will vibe or you always resonate. You always have the same frequency of the people you're around. That's so right. cinnamon. Right. Oh, that's a great suggestion. C- cinnamon nutmeg. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Like, like we use pumpkin pie spice and that's like, it, it's, it's cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, and ginger. I mean, perfect for the, oh, uh, for, 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 for the earth element. Let's dive into number seven. The number seven number guys, seven. the enthusiast guys, the number seven are those Dr. X and I talk about the friends we know that like to bring the party because their life is about connectivity. They're the ones in the middle of the crowd. If you're a seven, you love to see your friends come together. You like to be the fuel behind the fire in every event. So you don't have to be, you have the FOMO, fear of missing out. Like I have these individuals that want to be a part of the big crowd, but their beauty is that they can bring people together. They dream big. They're the dreamers and they are extroverted because the introverts need them. Okay. I'm a bit of an introvert and they're very talented, but they're great communicators. So 
you have individuals who have like this fire element to them that just burst out with flames and they're just like everybody loves to be around them, but they strengthen our culture. And you'll find people in our world that are like the great communicators and they also are the ones who what meld people together. So yeah, these people are these like politicians or people who can actually bring big groups together. And when I see these people come in and they're tired, this is what they do. They spend all day loving the party, getting everybody together. But they get to a point where their adrenals and thyroid and their energy mm -hmm. system get low. What do I do? They need time to themselves. Like they literally get burnt out. They're like, I don't want to talk to another individual. I spend all my time helping these individuals bring together. So it is important. Like you remember we talked, Doc, you just said, like for the lungs to get out there and get in the air. These individuals need to go ground. They need to go by themselves and do a lot of activity to help bring circulation to their body because as much as they love the connectivity, like they need to go connect with the earth. Like that is yes. the thing they do. And the fire elements need what in their life? They need some forms of metal. They need some people who are basically a little bit more organized and more steady, a little bit more forthwith to bring some balance to them. That's what I like. That's good. I love it. So, so let's talk about seven. So what are, you know, what are some of the negative emotions they can experience? And oh, what are great. some things they can do to help get them back on track? Well, when they're very high energy, um, they had a tendency to always be on the move. So when they're always on the move, they have a tendency to um, push off relationships. So the unhealthy portion, and this is like romantic too, the sevens are always so inter interested about everybody else's relationships that they go, they'll start to pick and at the, if they ever have a romantic relationship, they'll neglect it because they go, well, do I have enough time for a romantic relationship and everybody else? So then they may have the tendency to find something wrong in a romantic relationship. Sevens do that quite a bit. So as they see something wrong, they get isolated, they get lonely, and then they get depressed. So no, I, I guess I got to stop you real quick and say this. I'm, I love Seinfeld. And so it's reminding me of, of, of if any, any Seinfeld fans here of like Jerry, he broke up with his girlfriend for he didn't like the way she ate peas, you know, <laughs> yes. like, I mean, and there's a hundred other episodes of like, had man hands. That, 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 that was, just, that's right. That's like every episode, you know, he breaks up with a girlfriend because of some little, like, you know, some itty bitty thing. thing. I always find that whenever, like I talk to, that's my joke for the sevens is like she, that she had man hands because <laughs> as they start to get picky about another person, the thing is you'll look back in their past, the sevens will usually have something that happened young where they yes. didn't have a very happy, a happy upbringing, where they almost had to nurture themselves and nurture others. Like I didn't experience it from my parents. My parents had a lot of problems. So I'm going to bring the nurturing to other people around me to experience what I missed. So that's why they become the person who goes out and brings people together. And so when they come in, I say, you know what you need to do? You need to focus and do one thing at a time because they, you'll find that the individual are seven, I want to do five or 10 things at a time. They literally do. And I say, stay present, slow down, and don't be afraid of confrontation. Navigate your feelings. Be, be okay with being in a relationship and then saying what you feel. You know, I have a friend who's a seven and he's a scattered seven. So he leaves things everywhere. Like he'll leave his keys. He'll leave, I mean, literally he would leave his, he would leave his arm if it, if it wasn't attached to him. The that's daydreamers. What, that's oh yeah, daydreamers, the daydreamers all day long. And I love sevens. I love being around sevens because oh, man, me too. they're me just too. joyful. They're happy, joyful people, especially when they're in their zone and doing well. And um, oh. man, you don't have to do much to have fun around seven. My uh, my assistant Lindsay Blaze, she's like a seven all through and through. So now she's got if, a little eight in her, though. I think too, probably or maybe six. What, what what's her what's her wing? Do you think? I think it's, um, I think it's six. It okay. usually a little bit six. No, I, 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 I can see that her being like, well, this could go wrong. Yeah. So, it's good. Okay. And uh, they, I always say that, um, with her having her new pup, like, it's like, I want to rescue people. Like how much she wants yes. to love on people. Like she has, a and six she's thing. awesome. I mean, she's, oh, just, she's awesome. Is just awesome. So, so what are, what are some food supplements, some things that sevens can do when they get out of balance? Well, with sevens, I find that since they're so emotionally drawn to connectivity, I usually find these individuals have like the pericardium effect within Chinese medicine, which is still, they have some forms of the fire element within them. Um, I do see quite often, especially with 
um, ladies and men who have this fire element to bring people together is connectivity. We talked about what we say earth element. Okay. That's the nurturing aspect. But when you have a fire that's pulling people together, I say that individual they can have estrogen dominance. They have the motherly effect. Like they will actually have higher amounts of estrogen within them. So mm. I always recommend foods that can actually, of course, build a pericardium up like things that can build the heart tissue up. But I, I recommend things like dem or things with broccoli. I do things with like different types of cauliflower, Brussels sprouts that can, uh, in a sense, assist with the, um, the breakdown of certain estrogens and also slow the thyroid, uh, slow the thyroid down because they get really hyperactive in a bit and they get manic. They do this. Uh, they get a bit manic, but they also need something to help break down the estrogens. So uh, with supplementation, Doc, I always say, let's try some Suma root. Again, I go back to yep. Suma. And I also try to, there's two of them I use in the office. There's one called the Danga. The Danga is an Ayurvedic um, yeah. herb, and it helps build heart and helps break down certain types of estrogens. And so I love the Danga. And I love Sumeru for those individuals. I love those too. I'll throw another one out there. And this is more for probably the wood elements, but it could be good. You know, milk thistle can sometimes be good for those looking to, uh, you know, get rid of some of the, uh, those, uh, those estrogens, those phytoestrogens yes. too. But I love those yeah. recommendations. Those are fantastic. So uh, good. Let's move on to number eights now. I, I'm an eight wing seven. So I've got a little seven, but a lot more eight. So uh -huh. Let's talk about the eights. Oh, gracious. I love the eight because I say this, the eight we call the challenger, but I say challenging in a great way. The eight, as Doc here is, the strong individuals of our world, truly, the courageous, the, the straightforward, but very clear. And the people see you, Doc, as a justice seeker. Just because of yeah. the information, yeah. you seek justice. Like if something's wrong in our culture, people trust you because you're right. I'm going to tell you like it is. This is the truth. And this is what I believe. So everybody around you feels safe. I, I don't know how many people come up and I saw them talk to you. It's because they say, thank you. It's like, I feel safe because you're willing to go out there and bring stability to the, to the world. So the people that are eights are usually like judges, lawyers, leaders, the people who are CEOs or owners of companies. Like why? Because they create foundation. And if everybody feels stable into, into their lives. Now, what happens with an eight, in my opinion, is as you push and go forward, you will neglect yourself totally. Like you will get burnt out and fatigued. And what does this do? It can lead to issues of control. You can get a little bit angry, a little more aggressive. And what you'll start denying the pain within yourself. So I'm always very cautious with an eight. Is you cannot get to the point where you get upset to where you deny your own pain. Feel what you're feeling. So I'll share this. This was before I was in practice. This was when I was in school studying to become a doctor. So mm -hmm. I remember I started seeing patients for the first time and, and, and I started a, a club at school, which was all about helping people reach their, you know, their op optimal. And so I, I, I started feeling though myself, cause I didn't really have a, I had a mentor at the time, but I didn't learn this from him yet. But he said, like, I started taking everyone's problems on myself. Like I would give uh -huh. people health advice. Yeah. Some of them wouldn't follow it and, and they wouldn't get well. And then I would encourage somebody or tell somebody, Hey, you're, you, you know, Hey, you need to lead this and do this. Oh, and, yeah. this and, try. and sometimes they wouldn't do it. And I started taking it all on myself. Like I was failing because yeah. many people weren't getting, you know, and some, listen, some people were getting well, some yes. people were growing in, in leadership and character, but not everyone was. And so I started focusing on all of these people that weren't seeing results Oh yeah. So, on myself personally, I remember going in and seeing my uh, a mentor and a pastor of mine. I sat down with him. And I said, "I feel like I'm so exhausted. Like I want to cry, but I just can't. Like I feel like I'm yeah. the weight of the world on my shoulders." And he just shared some advice with me. He said, "Listen, uh, Josh, your 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 job is to just serve and love people. It's not to change them. You yes. can't change them. Yes. You're just here to." So, anyways, but it reminds me of that with myself is that I. I do seek justice and I see injustice in the world that it motivates me, inspires me. It wants me, it, I, I want to help set people free. But if I take all of that on myself and say that mm -hmm. yeah. what, I, I'm responsible just to go out there and do my best and what I'm called to do, I'm not responsible to, you know, I can't take it upon myself whether things happen or whether somebody follows my advice or not. So anyways, just that's, I agree. Like the eights are those individuals who, when they, they look after, after everyone else, you're giving advice to all of the peeps at school and all your friends. And 
it, you take the duty upon yourself because you probably had a strong genetic line of people in your lives that were natural leaders that were very strong and courageous. And that's passed down to you as a gift. And so it, to my opinion too, or my advice is like, you have to tell yourself you cannot take care of every person yeah. all the time with every situation. That is just the number one rule for the egg. You cannot take care of everyone. And yeah. listen. Well, e- e- even now, like I have like, I mean, the amount of people that ask me health questions is kind of, I mean, if I went and tried to answer every question on, and listen, I do what I can. I'll answer someone on Instagram or Facebook, or I have personal friends that of course my mom sends and I do my best to care for those people. But thank God for Chelsea too. Like she'll let me know. Oh yeah. This is what's honey. Like you got to. Now's the time to stop. And so I just had to, I had to draw on solid lines in myself and say, Hey, I can work till six, but like once we eat dinner, I'm done. Like yeah. after dinner, I am absolutely done. I can't work anymore. And then, hey, I'm taking a day a week. And I'm taking off. I'm not working. I'm not answering email. I'm just not even looking at my, you know. And so, uh, but I think just being in a boundaries and also just scheduling some fun into your life is like, it's so important for an eight. Oh, I, I, I love um, when I see um, you and Ch- Chelsea, like you have things on Instagram where you're showing you guys enjoying a great meal, hanging out with your puppies and doing things because what it does for an eight is it creates that, um, that connection to your softer side. Mm-hmm. You have a soft wow. side, but you've had to be a leader so hard, much that you have this, you have to have a hard veneer at some points. And so you want to be able to show your softer side. And I think it's a great thing. And when you do that, you train your body to go, Hey, I'm in this wood element. I'm I'm the root. Yeah. I am strong. Like and people see that. People see that you're the tree. You're like give me stability. But you're right. You have to take time yourself and be very vulnerable to your own feelings and just let that softer side come out. The yin of that whole of your body needs to yeah. show itself. That's and self care and taking the day off like is a must for you. Because so remember that wood. If you if you burn too hot, you'll you'll burn up. That's, oh, exactly. so, dude, that's a, it's a great analogy. It's a great point. Yeah. And so for myself or eights, any, any eights out there, the other thing, eights, when you're healthy, one other thing, you need to have a filter. And so yeah. eights tend to just say whatever's on their mind, no mm-hmm. filter. And, and there, there's health in that. You want to have some of that, but at the same yeah. time, you want to be uh, cogn- cognizant of others' feelings and how that's going to affect people. And so again, I think eight should be challenging people, but challenging people wrapped up with love and compassion is when yes. eights are in their zone. And so eights, you got to take care of your liver big time. And so it's, again, milk thistle is so critical. Stragglers is critical to a degree as well, yeah. because especially if you're having digestive issues, but I would say, you know, milk thistle, cilantro, parsley, oh, a lot of, lot of, gr- yes. lot, lot of green yeah. food, salad, veggie juices can be really good for those eights as well. Yes, the veggie juices, the green juices, the cilantro, some dandelions, good for the kidneys. It also yeah. shows for that. I do, you know, I like, Doc, I like Shisandra as well. Shisandra is yes. a natural glutathione builder, so you get that one in there too. That's and great. The wood builders, like, they show that the individual with the, um, the liver um, in the wood element, the fire, the heat that makes them push hard, is that when you start breaking down some of these chemicals and some of this, uh, anything toxic in the liver, it frees up your body's capacity to purify your blood more so it means yes. that the wood element can actually like bring on more capacity they can take on more if they start taking care of the liver so you have to start eating rich that uh like some people say well eat liver well you could eat liver to help yep. build up the liver things that build up the, the blood in that, fa- that that's fashion. right yeah. and i and i do that frequently everything everything oh, we're yeah. sharing including what you're sharing let's go number nine this is the last of the enneagram elements oh, and word. here's what i'll tell you dr chris i love a nine and it's you. All right. I know oh, you're nine. So, oh, man, I know you're a nine one, but you're the best. And, and oh, I, and I just want to say this too. Uh, we've covered a lot here. We're going to cover nines in a second, but make sure to follow Dr. Chris here on Instagram. You literally have the best Instagram. And I mean this, you're the person oh. I read the most posts from all the way through on all of Instagram, because you are so brilliant in your, your knowledge of Chinese medicine uh, and of Ayurveda and of helping people heal, especially healing their emotions. So make oh, sure to, to, to follow him. Is it just Dr. It's, I'm trying to remember. It's just at Dr. Motley. And Dr. Motley spelled yeah. out. And Dr. Motley, Dr. spelled out. And so, so D-O-C-T-O-R-M-O-T-L-E-Y. So yeah. at Dr. Motley, make sure to follow him on Instagram and make sure to go to his website. What's your website, doc? 
www.drmotley.com. You can do it either way, but I have it spelled out. You can do D O C T O R M O T L E Y. So we do this, and I, I will say, Doc, thank you so much for your kind words. And I believe we've become good friends, and I really appreciate everything you've done for the health community. And um, I say that truly sincerely. And you are probably one of the funniest guys. You say, Really? I'm like, No, I tell. My great assistant, Lindsay, who runs uh, our, the way the visuals and the media, how it's put together, the way it's styled. And we were there and we saw you at the conference and uh, we were talking how fun you were. And I was like, I was so glad you were there. And yeah, I'm telling you, this really guy's funny. Time. I was saying he's a funny guy. And he's great. So again, thanks, Doc, for your kind words and encouragement. So You're we'll talk about, we'll, nine, let's talk right? about, let's talk about, well, I'll go ahead and talk about you for just a minute and then you All can right. dive in. So, and just number nines in general, we have another friend, Isaac. Oh, yeah. uh, love him. I mean, one of, another oh, wow. great friend of mine. He's a nine. Now, here's the thing about nines. Nines don't really like confrontation. They want harmony. They don't like confrontation. Uh -huh. um, but I'll say this as well. So, so that's sort of one of the things that, that you just have to be conscious of if you're a nine is if you just want to run and leave all confrontation whatsoever. Nines, though, I, the thing I've noticed about most nines I know, I have another uh -huh. nine. that I'm, I have three nines that I'm really close with. And nines have so much wisdom. That's one thing uh -huh. I'll say. A lot of the nines I know, if I want good advice, nines are the sort of people that they'll be in a room full of people. They could be sitting like, I'm thinking about like the nice of the round table. You got 12 people sitting there and everyone's talking. The nines will sit there, not say anything until at one point the nines will say one sentence or one word and it'll be the most profound thing that anybody has said the entire time. Oh, That's how what? I would define a nine. What are your oh, thoughts on nines? Well, I'll tell you, I think that nines, like we are a natural, like a peacemaker. They say yeah. that we have that, that nines do have the tendency to like our friend Isaac and the people we know that when you talk to them, they have no judgment. The thing is, but they say no judgment about other people. They take and perceive information and they try to categorize, categorize it in their brain, try to take in the effect and the feelings of everybody that's involved. And then try to respond and say, how can this bring people together? Like yeah. that's the peacemaker within them. And so your strengths are that you're so good of, of a listener. Like as a nine, I don't know how many times I'm not trying to talk about myself, but a lot of people like to talk to me because they have all said, my friends have as my life, like you're such a great listener. And, and nines, we know as Isaac would be very empathetic. He has five dollars and he can feel yes. what everybody feels. And we, I look, I feel like, the nines can be the grounding force, the mediators in our world. They help calm things down. And in Chinese medicine, I, they do compare some nines to like the earth element because they're the nurturers. They, they, they help support people. So uh, that may be the reason Isaac and you get along so well as well, because you're the root wood that's planted in the earth. Like you feel nurtured when you're around them and feel calm. Now they care about individuals and we want peace. But when the nine is, I'll say it back to my life is as much as I push to bring peace within everybody else, I'll exhaust myself to make sure, like, let's say we all have a group of friends going out. I want to make sure everybody goes to the right spot, the right restaurant, the right time. And I, it's all dependent on me. So the feelings of others all depend on me. Mm. So when I get burned out and tired, I literally want to withdraw and become apathetic. I want to shut down and not talk to anybody because I've got, done this for everybody else to bring peace that I don't feel love. That's only because I'm speaking out of fatigue. I'm yeah. speaking out of a time where I get resentful and angry because I let myself burn out. Now, uh, any nine that we know, Josh, you would tell them, you said they would say, like, they're not going to uh, try confrontation. And the reason that is is because we have a problem with boundaries. Nines do not like confrontation. We have a problem setting up boundaries saying no. And so we will say yes to most things to bring mm -hmm. peace. So then we get very tired and then we become introverted. That's why we're introverted. So yeah. we, I tell the individuals that come in with this nine personality that match mine. Uh, okay. I say, you need to say no. You need to set boundaries and you have to have physical activity. Physical activity is a must for you. You have to get out there and move your body and remember that you're loved and people do think you're important. It is hard for a nine to hey, get a compliment. Like I'll say this, yeah. Doc, when you said that, it's hard for me to take that, but you're one of my closest friends. And I feel like when I'm around you, I feel, I feel secure. And I hear that. So when you yeah. say it, you're straightforward and I believe it. I'm like, say that. But nines have a hard time believing that they're loved. It's funny. The, the nines I know are actually all waters or woods, um, yeah. most of them to, to a degree. Yeah. And, and, and those are the most introverted 
of the elements. And so again, and you're, as you're saying, they get withdrawn. And so again, I think it's so important that there's that balance. There's a balance of being by yourself and going deep and reading and, and doing those things you love, but also getting around people. I think of all, all the Enneagrams, I'm thinking like nine specifically, it really is important that they have a healthy mixture of alone time and time in community. Oh, I agree. I think that Doc is we had that wood element with us. I think it's really healthy. We have small sections of time where we're always around people, but we do have to make sure that there's quite a bit of a long time. You have to recharge because we put so much energy in the small amount of time that we're around other individuals. So whenever I even analyze myself or people that come in with this personality, I have the, the, um, the racing mind mentality. Yeah. So I have to slow my brain down just a bit. Like I will literally try to take a lot of like l Yes. Or different types of GABA, a good mixture. And I will um, do anything to help build up my adrenals. So again, I like reishi. I'll do a lot of reishi and mushrooms. And uh, for me personally, instead of Asian culture, uh, Asian heritage, I like Japanese knotweed, which is one that helps build up and nourish yeah. a bit of iron in the body. But that really helps my brain, helps my body um, calm down. So nines need that nourishment. And the foods that most nines would need, like, a, well, I'm a wood in that wood category. But since we're peacemakers, I always try to uh, build up the stomach. We, we naturally will worry. We naturally yeah. will. Yeah. Something yeah. that builds up the stomach. Yeah. That's good. So, so some of the stuff, licorice root, licorice root for the stomach, bone broth. There you go. Bone broth. Bone broth. Fantastic. I'm telling you, collagen, like I literally, I Korean heritage. I drank bone broth and, uh, since I was young. And so that's what one of the most healing warm things in my, 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 uh, my diet that I do for wow. my stomach. It's fantastic. Yes. Well, you've dropped so much knowledge on us, uh, Dr. Dr. Chris. Uh, I'm so appreciative. I want to just encourage you guys. If you guys want to continue to learn the depths of real nutrition, ancient these ancient principles, make sure to follow Dr. Chris. It's at Dr. Motley. That's spelled out Dr. D-O-C-T-O-R Motley, M-O-T-L-E-Y, at Dr. Motley on Instagram and check out his website. He's got some new stuff on there that's fantastic drmotley.com and he's a regular on the show one number one reason because he's brilliant he adds so oh. much value every time he's on here your depth of knowledge is i i put in the top one percent of people i interview and that's one one of the things again i know we get along for a lot of reasons one is we love talking about you know healing the world we love talking about all kinds of stuff but uh that's one of the things that's helping people get healthy. And uh, man, I, I appreciate you, man. Thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate you, Doc. I really do say it. just thank you so much and the opportunity just to be able to converse with you. And I think we have the best time. We talk about Seinfeld and we talk about <laughs> yeah. herbs and Chinese medicine. So if we're What's in the line better? getting a coffee, what do we talk about? It's like, which herbs good for that condition? But I say this, you're a leader, Doc. And so you bring stability to the world. You're the eight. And there has been people that are pathfinders in the health world. And you're the pathfinder. And I say that with all my respect and I do give you that praise. So know that I love you. And that's the truth about Dr. X. Awesome. Thank you, sir. All right. Hey, thanks everybody listening to another, uh, another podcast. And we want to thank Dr. Motley for coming on. Have a great week, everybody. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. 